Hi and welcome to this new video. Today we are going to talk about two-dimensional loop experiments and Q-codes. So in one of the video series before we have covered the topic of one-dimensional loop experiments already and this time we are going to go one step ahead and make it two-dimensional. Um, when is this actually useful? Well, just a very simple example. Just imagine you have a nanostructure and you wanted to measure a quantum transport experiment in that structure and now you have two different gates like for example a top gate and a bottom gate. Then uh, you want to sweep both of the different gates individually and see how the current that is going through your structure is changing and this is basically uh, what we are going to code in today's video. Um, in order to do so, we start with a plain Jupyter notebook, but I will not go uh, through each of the steps individually since we already have a video uh, provided on one-dimensional loop experiments. And as always, you can find all the source code to this video down below. So there's a link to a GitHub repository, which I will constantly update as I go along with all the different videos and tutorials here. So also go ahead and have a look at that one. Uh, in addition to the videos. Um, okay, so before uh, or in order to start, um, I will go to that repository now. I will start to copy all the different um, libraries and packages that we have been using for the one dimensional loop experiment, which are these here. Um, and then I will also go ahead and copy the part where we created the dummy uh, instrument. Um, but since we are uh, we are doing a two-dimensional uh, loop experiment here. We want to have two different instruments now, which are both sweeping one of the gates. So I will create a second one, which I call source two. Also I have to change it in the name. And then I will also go ahead uh, and change the names of these two different uh, voltages over here. Okay, so let's create these two different instruments. And the next thing that we need to do is we have to perform, uh, we have to create uh, the different parameters that we are going to measure. Um, and I will also go ahead and copy that from one of the former tutorials. So uh, let's just quickly take this one. Um, and now uh, you can see that we had the voltage, the applied voltage over here. Since we have two different gates, now we need a second one of these. Um, and I will now call these uh, applied voltage one and two. And I also have to change that in the labels accordingly uh, and maybe also in the names of the parameters. Um, and then of course I also have to change the get and set functions accordingly. So this will be source 2 and voltage 3. Um, and the, wh what was that? And voltage 3. Okay, strange. Um, and then I will do the same thing with the uh, second, with the, with the set function over here. Okay, uh, now that we have done this, I will also change the uh, current value, the, the measured current over here, <clears throat> so that we don't only have a dependency on one of the two different parameters, but on both of them. So just let me quickly change that over here. So this has to be um, source two and then voltage three. Okay. Uh, so now that we have the set of parameters ready, we can start setting up our experiment. Um, and in order to do so, I will again go ahead and copy what we have from the one dimensional loop experiment. But this is actually where the first uh, and most important difference is, uh, is happening. So let's just quickly go ahead and copy what we already got from the one dimensional loop experiment, which is basically this. Um, and now uh, we want to add a second stage of loop. So basically we have one loop which is inside the other loop. And this is basically very simple. The only thing that we have to do is we copy this first loop part here where we actually tell what the loop is supposed to look like. Copy. Then I put a dot here. Paste. And then because of the uh, conventions that have been used in the in the coding of Q codes, this is not a capital L, but a small L. 
And basically with that, we have already created a two-dimensional loop, so there's no magic behind that. Of course, now this one would be very boring because uh, here we just change the same parameter twice and we want to sweep two independent parameters, so we have to change that. This has to be voltage one and this has to be uh, the voltage number two. And the same thing is of course also true for the measurement, so we have to uh, have the applied voltage one and two measured. Um, okay, let me just quickly go like that so you can see it better. Okay, so now we have what we are measuring is the voltage one, the voltage two, the uh, current that is going through the structure as well as the uh, time constant. Um, then we have our two different sweeps over here. Uh, and now I can also change the delay parameter or I will change the delay parameter because of course this measurement is going to take a little bit longer uh, than the one dimensional one. Okay, uh, as you know, if I do this, uh, the measurement is not starting because I now just defined the loop and now I have to run it. Um, and in order to make it a little bit more interesting, uh, now I'm going ahead and copying the live plotting part and then we will have a look at the plot uh, as it builds up uh, together. So let me quickly just go to the um, to the part where we do the live plotting and then paste that over here. Uh, so the matplotlib inline is not important yet. It's just if I want to uh, put the plot uh, if I want to put a plot inside this Jupyter notebook, but I will leave it there. Then we have to import this Qt plot part. Uh, this is basically the loop, the, uh, the data from our loop. Here is where we open the plot. We tell it that we want to measure i, which is this parameter over here. Uh, and then we'd say we want to plot it as a background task. And now Q codes automatically um, uh, sees basically or adjusts the plot in such a way that we will receive a two-dimensional plot and not a one-dimensional one, as I will show you right now. So I start the experiment. Um, now we are going to the plot and you can see this is now a colored plot. So uh, that's because we are sweeping voltage one and voltage two on the two different axes. You can see that voltage two is always swept from minus one to one and then it changes voltage one on one step. Here on the right side, you can see an automatically scaled um, color bar. So you can see that here the uh, current still hasn't reached its maximum uh, because of the reason that we are using a symmetric range. This should go up to two once this has reached the, the uh, upper part of the scale. Um, and of course, you can also see that uh, our function basically is linear in both the different directions. So you can see if I only sweep one of the parameters, there's a linear behavior. And if I sweep the other one, there's a linear behavior. That's just because we coded it that way by defining our I parameter. Um, okay, then what else can we see here? Well, we have these uh, triangles here. These are not only for uh, decoration purposes, but you can really move them and thereby adjust your color scale. Um, this is basically very useful if you want to highlight certain parts in your color or on your color scale. You can also add another one if you need one um, and can adjust it that way. And what you can see here, what is building up here is basically a histogram of all the different values per tick on your, uh, on your scale. Uh, so this is basically our final plot now. And as always, uh, if we go back to the terminal, if we want to have this plot in the terminal now, I can just type plot, uh, press uh, run, and then this is basically the plot that we just saw. And I can also save that, of course, um, as I also show in the um, GitHub repository. And with that, we are basically at the end again. So um, this was the two-dimensional plots, and then see you in the next video.